Hi, this is Josh from Romella, and today we're going to talk about taking apart and putting together the upper and lower nozzles for a Cut 200 SP. Um, some of the reasons you might want to know how to do this uh, are the upper and lower nozzles. Uh, Oftentimes, you just need to clean them uh, for monthly maintenance, but also these can, if they get too dirty, they can lead to wire breaks uh, because debris will build up on the guides, which will cause friction on the wire. Uh, if you're seeing uh, multiple wire breaks, but you're not seeing jams in the lower head or anything of that nature, a lot of times it is because the guides have built up uh, debris inside of them. Uh, so today I'll, I'll show you how to appropriately take them apart, clean them, put them back together, and then recalibrate the alignment of the wire so that you don't lose uh, any tolerance on your cutting. All right, for this one, we're gonna take apart the upper and lower nozzles. Uh, these parts are pretty fragile. You're gonna need uh, some custom tools from GF uh, Machining. They come with the machine. So first we're gonna take apart the lower head. So we'll need this tool. Uh, first, we're going to take off the plastic nozzle on top. So this is just a plastic nozzle. Under the nozzle, there are two spacers, and these are actually custom for each machine and might change over time. Uh, what this does is sets the distance between the nozzle and the bottom of the table. These should be washed off and replaced. And now you have this ceramic part that you need to be gentle with. Um, it's actually just finger tight. So all I did was spin to the left, but be very careful. Underneath is the assembly of the lower nozzle and can spill out. So sitting on top is actually the guide right there. So you have these two parts that need to be cleaned and washed. I'm going to go set all of this on the table so that we can wash it later and then we're going to do the upper nozzle. For the upper nozzle we're going to use this custom tool. Uh, first we're going to use this side which has two pins which mates, mates with the plastic cover on top and so we're going to do, uh, use that. Yeah, no, I'm going to need a pipe wrench. All right, so to take this off, uh, a lot of times it gets, uh, the upper nozzle gets tight and I like to use some sort of leverage, a uh, pipe wrench or what have you. So with this, two parts come off with this the plastic nozzle, and then this is the diffuser that helps to align the uh, th uh, jet of water that helps for threading. Now we still need to get the guide, and what we're gonna use is the other side of this tool. Uh, basically, there's almost a nut up there, and we need to use this. And this will align with that nut. Once again, be careful because the uh, guide itself is inside of here and is gonna come with it. Inside here is actually three parts uh, that we're gonna bring over to the table. All right, so now that we have both nozzles sitting here, so what we're gonna do is go through kind of disassembly and cleaning of each one. Uh, up here, we have the uh, lower novel nozzle and here's the upper nozzle. Uh, we still actually haven't taken apart the upper nozzle completely. There's actually four parts in here. So inside of here, uh, taking it out, this is kind of the housing for it. Uh, this is another diffuser. This is another diffuser for um, making sure that the wire is guided through. This is the actual guide itself and this is another housing. Okay, so now, what can happen, especially on the small guides, is they can build up uh, material as the wire goes through, uh, and so they need to be cleaned every once in a while to prevent wire breaks. Uh, once again, all I'm gonna use is isopropyl alcohol, and what I actually do is the smaller parts, I just actually bathe them for about 30 seconds and uh, shake it.
and then I just blast water through to kind of loosen up any of the dirt. And then the rest of the parts just wipe off uh, also with al uh, alcohol. Here you can see that this is getting pretty chewed up. This will actually start to affect uh, the pressure uh, that you get with the uh, clearing the wire. Uh, and that can start to cause problems on larger parts where uh, the uh, evacuation pres pressure is critical. Uh, these are pretty cheap uh, and can be replaced pretty regularly. <clears throat> Before putting the nozzles back, you wanna make sure that you clean off the surface on the actual uh, upper and lower head, just to make sure that they seat correctly. All right, so one thing to remember, so these little nozzles or these little guides, all of them have a, a basically an inlet to them. And what you need to remember is the wire always needs to be going uh, in the concave section, not on the flat side. So uh, with this one, how the stat goes is the diffuser is on the bottom and then the uh, guide goes and sits nicely on the diffuser. And then the other housing kind of sandwiches it all together. So you have a stack like that. And then the upper nozzle is gonna sit like this. And in goes the guide. <laughs> and what you wanna see is it completely lying uh, perfectly <coughs> concentric with the outer housing. And now this is ready to go back on. Same with this one. So you can see there's a small little concave part here. Once again, that should be aligned with how the wire is coming in. Uh, so this should also be pointing up and then it'll sit inside of this housing. So it'll pretty much sit like this and this is ready to go back on. All right, so now that we have the stack all put together for the upper, all you do is kind of just place it in there and screw it on. Doesn't need to be super tight. Do it kind of gentle, make sure it goes together nicely. There is an O-ring that will start to engage and you'll feel some friction from that. Once again, you don't need to wrench down too hard. And now the first thing to try, uh, because if the diffuser isn't on there correctly or something's not aligned, the jet of water won't come straight. So the first thing to do is just do the jet of water. That's coming down nice and straight. That means everything in there is aligned and we're good to go to the next step. So now we have the plastic nozzle and the other diffuser. Just put, place that back in there and screw this back on.
Okay, so now the upper nozzle is back on. So we're gonna put on the lower nozzle. There's a couple different ways to do this. You can either put this in first uh, and screw it on and try and flip it over, or I actually like to just kind of place it in place on there and then gently put this over top and trying to get it to seat nicely. This one can just be hand tightened. Remember to put the spacers back so that the height is set correctly. Put the nozzle back on. You don't need to wrench on these. These are plastic threads and you can just strip them. So just tighten a little bit and you should be good to go. Anytime that you replace the upper and lower nozzles, you should recalibrate the thread alignment, which we'll go over next. All right, what we wanna make sure is that the wire can thread now that we put the two nozzles back on. If they're not seated correctly, if any of the guides aren't seated correctly, you're not gonna be able to get the nozzle through. Um, so once again, I'm gonna turn on the pumps, make sure it's filled up with water before I move anything. We're going to try and thread. Uh, it threaded nicely, which means that the guides are lined up perfectly and we should be good to go. Once again, though, what we're going to do next is uh, alignment calibration so that uh, we continue to get the tolerances we want. If you don't do the alignment, you might start to uh, degrade your tolerances. All right, so now what we're gonna do is the wire alignment uh, or wire calibration. So we're gonna use this tool provided by uh, GF Machining Solutions. Um, right now this is in the stored configuration. What you can do is just take this out and it's this eye outlet. What you want it is it facing forward. Tighten that back down. Now it's ready to go. So what you wanna do is secure this to the back. It doesn't matter where it is, just as long as it's hanging off and it's securely on there. And then what you want to do is thread the wire through the eyelet. So what I do to kind of see if I'm aligned, I just turn on the jet and the jet will kind of tell you where you need to go. So now I can see that it's going through the middle so I know that I can thread it. Okay, so now the wire is threaded through the eyelet, and we're gonna come back over here, we're gonna select here. So here's your normal screen. What you wanna do is go over to the maintenance page, and you wanna go down to setup, and then the alignment tab. And the test we're gonna run is called GAJ, um, and it gives you kind of a schematic. Uh, this first one, the ZB parameter, is from the you can see it in the picture from the bottom of the table to the middle of the eyelet so if you haven't set this before if you get a new calibration tool you actually need to measure the thickness of your uh, of the stand and then the thickness divided by two of the eyelet and add them together and enter that here uh, i've used this eyelet before so i know that 0.815 is correct uh, so what we're going to do um, we're going to close the door we're gonna hit go. The first thing it says is the, is the upper head must be around 15 millimeters over the eyelet. This doesn't have to be perfect, but we know that point, the thing is 0.815.
We want to be at about 1.4055. Right now we're at 2.03, so I'm going to lower it. So like I said, uh, it says you need to be about there, so this is close enough. I know that we're 15 uh, millimeters over top, uh, so now we can run the rest of the test. It's gonna take about 10 minutes to finish. Um, once you get back, uh, if you don't have any warnings, that means it was successful and you can go ahead and cut your part.